Hey guys, just want to say thank you for stopping by. Let me know if you need anything. There's tech news for sure, and lots of crazy stuff. Actually, been a real wild week. You're gonna love it here. Okay, thanks. Go on, and little. Did someone say overclocking news? I'm not sure, I can't actually hear you guys. There's only a camera in front of me, sorry to break the illusion, but there's overclocking news through some overclocking that has happened around Computex. It starts with Intel's new Core i7-7740X CPU, which is kind of the competition to the Ryzen 5 1600. The overclocking was done by Gigabyte to put their X299 SoC Champion motherboard to the test. Just a quick disclaimer, sites are calling the chip 7740K because that's what the CPU-Z screenshot says, but the actual new CPU is called 7740X, just so you know. Okay, Gigabyte overclockers were able to get the 7740X to 7.5 GHz, breaking overclocking records for the chip in 3D Mark 03, 3D Mark 06, and Aquamark. This was possibly due to uh, liquid helium cooling, getting temperatures to drop to negative 250 degrees Celsius. Jeez. But it turns out that overclocker Dare 8 Hour was able to push the same i7 chip to 7,562 megahertz with the ASUS Rampage 6 Apex X299 motherboard, just beating out Gigabyte. But there seems to be a bit more tension coming to Gigabyte. I guess they promoted it directly. Well, Dare 8 Hour and ASUS uses G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 RAM for their overclock, and it seems like that RAM module broke a record of its own, getting past the 5.5 gigahertz frequency barrier. The overclocking was done by Top PC, who broke the DDR4 record of 5 GHz last year, and now he's come back to one up himself. He used an MSI X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard and the very same Intel i7 7740X processor. You see, what goes around comes back around. I don't know if I used that expression correctly, but well done, 7740X, if that's your real name. Hyperloop One, the superfast tube-like train company, has revealed proposed plans for connecting Europe, beginning with production and the transport of cargo in 2018, followed by transporting passengers in 2021 onwards. There have previously been route plans made in the US, and now there are nine more in Europe, including a 600-kilometer below-the-sea route between Spain and Morocco, a 2,000-kilometer route in Germany, and three routes in the UK, one that will connect Scotland and Wales. The nine routes were chosen out of 2,600 proposals through the Hyperloop One Global Challenge. Dang! But I wonder if this will make traveling in Europe a bit more affordable. But uh, probably got a bit to wait, don't I? Yeah. And Valve has new plans for SteamVR tracking in SteamVR Tracking 2.0. Valve will have new base stations available in November with improvements like sync on beam technology, smaller and lighter hardware, quieter and lower power, more reliable, cheaper, the ability to deploy more than two base stations in a VR setup, and facilitating multi-room VR experiences. The sync on beam technology delivers bursts of data through laser and sync hits as opposed to a sync blinker system, which Valve claims cause interference between base stations before. So it'll be nice to see a little less of that in the 2.0 version if that was the problem. A new component called the TS423 Wub chip is also required on the headset sensor for connectivity with the 2.0 base stations, which suggests that there may be uh, new Steam VR products coming soon, according to sources. So that's fun. Well, okay, let's do some uh, shorter news stories uh, said, said more quickly than the others, yes. Speaking of Steam, we've previously talked about Steam Greenlight, the service on Steam that has allowed users to vote for indie games to be published on the platform and how it will be replaced by Steam Direct. This will be a simplified system that allows developers to submit games for only $100. It was previously announced to be between $200 and $1,000. And they can get their money back if the game generates $1,000 in sales. The system goes into effect on June 13th. A new Mass Effect patch allows you to have whatever kind of sex you want to have. A year after Google showed off Waze Android Auto integration at the Google I.O. 2016, they have finally made the Waze navigation app available in Android Auto. Well, in beta at least. Walmart has a response to Amazon Fresh with a test pickup kiosk in Oklahoma City. Instead of parking and waiting for a staffer to bring out your groceries, you enter a pickup code and the kiosk automatically fetches your order from bins inside. It seems the grocery store wars are heating up everybody. Very exciting stuff. A new leaked render of the Galaxy Note 8 shows dual cameras, infinity display, and maybe an under-display fingerprint scanner. Sources are suggesting the new phone will be announced in August or September. Sources for all of today's news stories can be found in the NCIX forum post. 
Link to the description. I have a bad feeling about this. Uh, hashtag NCIXO dog to get us to say things on this show. Hey guys, I know you like computers and the gaming and all that jazz, but I know you. I know that sometimes you look yourself in the mirror and say, I am a dirty little boy. And that's precisely why when you subscribe to the NCIX newsletter in June, you'll be entered to win a Shimono cordless vacuum cleaner. Already subscribed? Just claim your newsletter points for this month and you'll be entered for a cleaner lifestyle. Yes, clean living starts with a clean floor and desk and other things that are in a living environment. So click over here or in the description below for more info on all that stuff. All right, that is all for Netlink Daily. Thank you so much for watching. Click over here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter right over there. But as always, like the video if you liked it. Comment below for fans with benefits. And subscribe even if, you wa if, if that's what you would like to do to uh, NCIX for more videos like this one. 